A very warm welcome to all of you here in today's Academia. I would like to thanks to team Nabicon for giving me this wonderful opportunity to speak about the most vital part of the burn care management. And this special session is going to be covered under the topic food for thoughts. And I'll be sharing my expertise over the subject nutritional formulas to feed our burn patients. These are the points which I'm going to cover in this session today. We'll have a look about the flow chart uh, for the nutritional formula prescription, various modes of feeding, what all challenges we face, then different nutritional formulas, their prescription, their administration, and of course, their monitoring. This is a simple flow chart which defines uh, the flow of nutritional formula prescription. So once you receive patient uh, at the burn treating facility, we manage uh, with the primary treatment and, uh, and as well as um, Simultaneously, we initiate the nutrition care process, which includes detailed nutritional assessment and nutritional uh, requirement calculation. And we do uh, calculate energy requirement by using Kariri formula for all major burn patients. And uh, for minor burn patient, we uh, prefer using RDA by ICMR with the addition of 10 to 20% extra calories. Then further, we select the mode of feeding, uh, then uh, feeding formulations and uh, in the next step, formula prescription and this their administration. And at the end, we uh, do monitor uh, by checking nutrient adequacy, tolerance, and recovery. So my dear colleagues, I would like to highlight here that whatever nourishment we are going to provide to our burn patient is meant for their healing and recovery. And of course, uh, at the satiety level in an affordable budget, and uh, the macronutrient and micronutrient uh, requirement is dependent on certain factors like age, gender, their percentage of total burn surface area, the pre-morbid nutritional state, and the weight of our patient. And importantly, we have to take care of their cultural and religious beliefs as well. So once we, are, uh, we find out the nutritional requirement, the next thing uh, is to decide the mode of feeding. And uh, these are the various modes of feeding, but of course, oral is the best preferred mode of feeding. And by using this mode, we reduce certain complications associated with the lines. But what happens uh, in such some clinical conditions when we do not uh, feed our patients through the oral route or oral alone, then we shift our patient to the antral feeds. And then the challenges, uh, with the uh, antral feeds are uh, what all to feed through this antral route and which nutritional formula will be the best to feed our bond patients. So the answer is uh, the nutritional uh, formula should be patient specific and it should be in the liquid form. Uh, the basic nutritional science suggests to use polymeric formulas which are dense in the nutrients and in a balanced proportion. And the formula should fulfill the optimum nutritional demand. It should be easily available and easily acceptable by the patient. And it should be prepared at hygienically safe environmental condition. And laminar airflow is the advanced technique to prevent infection. Also, the formula should be cost effective and it should fit into the patient's budget or economy. Now, let's have a look about uh, various uh, nutritional formulas you can use or you can advise to your patient. So uh, the first is through the natural dietary sources, which are prepared in the kitchen uh, by using uh, natural food items available locally and seasonally. These are easily available, easily acceptable by the patients also. And also these are the cost-effective formulas. But there are some negatives over the above positive points, like the process of uh, preparation is time-consuming and it needs additional member who uh, can prepare these formulas. And, uh, and also uh, the nutritional calculation cannot be accurately calculated. On the other side, scientific formulas uh, are prepared commercially in the labs by the industries. These are hygienically tested formulas. Nutrient calculation uh, can be very exact, accurate, and easy to find out with these uh, formula preparations. These are easy to prepare bedside by the nursing staff and uh, various condition specific formulas makes our jobs easy like uh, diabetic formulas, uh, renal formulas or hepatic formulas. And uh, these formulas do not have much difference into the cost also. 
And some of the examples are polymeric formulas, oligomeric formulas, monomeric formulas, disease-specific formulas, and elemental and semi-elemental preparations, which we can use in the sepsis and critically ill patients. Now, move on to the nutritional prescriptions. So uh, these are the important points. Uh, I'll go through one by one. How much to feed uh, by using these formulas? So we have to do the fluid calculation uh, by using 35 ml per kg body weight, and it goes approximately three liters in a day. The dilution and concentration should not go beyond 300 osmoles, otherwise it will be a hyperosmolar and it can create diarrhea or other complications. The rate can be hourly, two hourly or three hourly, and type could be bolus or continuous. This is a sample prescription which uh, I use at my center. So the principle of diet will be high calorie, high protein, vitamin and mineral rich liquid diet at the rate of, for example, 100 ml per two hourly by using NG. And the total volume uh, we can uh, give for a day uh, along with the daily nutrient supply, which includes energy, protein, carbohydrate, fat and fiber calculations. These are the simple formulations uh, by using oral and antral high protein liquid diet formulas. Uh, you can prepare uh, at home and you can prepare at bedside. So you can use milk, curd, sattu and protein supplement together. You can use chicken and mutton soup if your patients are non-vegetarian. Also dal soup is a good option. Um, and whey protein uh, supplement uh, along with the water or milk is also a good choice of option. This is an example uh, of high protein uh, dietary sources for a non-vegetarian and vegetarian group of people you can advise. And uh, further we'll have a look about the preparation of liquid feeds and uh, their administration. So we are using three types of feeding formulas based on individual patients' nutritional demand and tolerances, uh, like kitchen feeds, which we prepare hygienically at the hospital kitchen liquid section. Formula feeds, uh, which are prepared bedside by the nursing staff. And also we mix uh, formula, uh, supple scientific formulas uh, to the kitchen feeds to enhance uh, the nutritional uh, composition. Mm, because sometimes our patients have higher nutritional demand and it gets difficult to fulfill through the natural dietary sources. Special formulas like semi-elemental and elemental feeds uh, are recommended in specific condition where we uh, have... Uh, no bowel functions or uh, gut function is impaired. This is a simple example from my unit where we had a patient of 35 year old uh, male, 40% uh, burn, and he got intubated immediately uh, because of the inhalation injury. And now he uh, cannot eat orally. So if you can look at this picture, the flow chart will define uh, the process here uh, that his age was 35 year male, 40% TBSA weight was 70 kg. He uh, got resuscitated and intubated with the dressing at the time of admission and the nutrition support was initiated. We calculated his requirement by using Kareli formula and protein by 1.5 grams per kg body weight. Uh, we decided to feed him through the nasogastric um, tube feeding and he had normal bowel function and clinically he was stable. So we decided to feed by using polymeric feeding formulas. The principle of diet was high calorie, high protein liquid feed. And we started with the slow volume, 100 ml per two hourly, and then we increased up to 300 ml two hourly. Uh, we propped up uh, this patient to 45 degree position and we checked uh, his tolerance and uh, GRVs. Uh, so um, GRVs, you can go up to 500 ml. And if it is more than 500 ml, you have to withhold the feeding. Also, we checked his GI symptoms and uh, the other parameters uh, from the recovery point of view. So these are the uh, monitoring parameters which you can use while prescribing nutritional formulas to your patient. Daily monitoring of nutrient intake uh, by using 24-hour dietary call to check the optimum nutrient adequacy. Also, GI symptoms like loose motion, vomiting or constipation uh, so that you can modify diet accordingly. Uh, RT aspiration, uh, skin grafting, uh, whether the grafts are accepted or rejected and the wound are healed or not uh, by following weekly weight monitoring. So I'd like to thank everyone here uh, for the listening and uh, I welcome you all in the Q&A session further. Thank you very much.